Hi there! It is summer and I have a number of upgrades in mind for my outdoor living areas. Some are involving electric upgrades, some are involving gardening, and some are involving landscaping. One thing that I have in mind involves the night illumination of the gazebo and its surroundings. The current illumination is based on low-power LED strings powered by batteries recharged during the day by small solar panels. However, I found that this kind of illumination has a lot of drawbacks. First of all, the lights are very dim. They are just fine when entertaining guests having conversation while enjoying the freshness of the evening air. But when it comes the time to do some table game that requires being able to look at pictures or reading stuff, often we end up going inside where we can have more light. In addition, I need to turn on and off the lights manually whenever I need them. If I leave them always on and let their sensor take care of the switching, they end up using the whole battery by the middle of the night, and sometimes they take so long to recharge that by the time it is evening again they don't last anymore that much. The solution would be to use bigger solar panels, but the batteries are still small and they need their time to recharge. If I let them recharge too fast, they will start losing their capability of retaining the charge too soon, and I would have to replace them relatively often. So I would trade off the usage of solar panels with more waste in exhausted batteries. The right thing to do, in my view, is therefore to use regular 120V lamps. Obviously low power LEDs, but brighter than the ones that I currently have. The thing is that I do like the automatism of having them turn on and off automatically from dusk to dawn, so I thought I could design and build my own automatic switch, which requires just very few components and is very cheap to make. Let's get into the details of this simple gadget. Here is the schematic of a typical dusk dawn automatic switch. It is a very standard design and it requires just five components, not considering the box where to put it, the 120V socket to put on the front panel and the power cord to plug it in. The load is basically made of the LED lamps we want to control. The 120V AC input goes directly through a protection fuse and to the series of a 50K resistor and a photoresistor, which is the sensor that will detect the daylight condition to turn the light bulbs on and off. When there is enough daylight, the resistance of the photoresistor is very low, in the range between 1 and 4K. When we are getting closer to dusk, the daylight starts dimming and the resistance instead increases. Once the resistance hits the 16K threshold, the voltage at its lead goes above 30 volts AC. It is at this point that the diac starts conducting and it triggers the triac. The triac in turn will let the current flow through the load, thus turning on the lights. Very simple, right? Let's now take a look at the prototype I made to verify that the circuit works as expected. When I build a prototype, I normally make use of a breadboard like this one. However, this time I need to work with a high voltage of 120V AC and the use of a breadboard is kind of unsafe. You know, first the various connections are very close to each other and it is very easy to cause short circuits between the components. Second, sometimes it happens that a wire pin comes out of the hole and goes touching something else. And of course, I would really not want that to happen if we are high voltage all around. Third, I'm not even sure that such a board is rated for such high voltages. To obviate to all these issues, I normally take a totally different approach when working with high voltages. Here is how I do it. A circuit mounted on a wooden tablet and some screw terminal blocks arranged all around. Basically, the power supply comes from a regular power cable which has its end connected to a terminal block, where I can distinguish between the hot wire and the neutral wire. The whole circuit is then built all around the tablet and the terminal blocks. I basically attach all the components on one side of the terminal blocks, and then I use the other side of the same terminal blocks to wire all the connections between the various components. 
For example, here I have the 50k resistor from the schematic, and here is the photoresistor. And on the other side of the terminal blocks, here is the wire that connects them in series. The other end of the 50k resistor goes to the hot wire of the power supply through the fuse. The center joint of the resistor's series is connected instead to one side of the diac, while the other side goes to the gate of the triac. The T1 terminal of the triac goes to the neutral, and the T2 terminal goes to one end of the small 120 volt light bulb, while the other end goes directly to the hot wire of the power supply. So, you see, this is a relatively easy way to mount the circuit, which someone can find even easier than using a breadboard. The very good thing that comes out from this technique is that the wires are firmly screwed in the terminal blocks, and there is no way that they can get easily loose. And to me, this means that this is a much safer approach than using a breadboard when high voltages are involved. Of course, keep in mind that we have live and uninsulated wires all over the places, so we better don't touch the circuit while it is powered up, if we don't want to get a dangerous electric shock. I would actually recommend that you do not embark in the building of such prototypes when high voltages are involved, unless you are very familiar with all the necessary precautions to handle these kind of circuits. Remember, a shock with a 120 volt AC can be really painful and even fatal. Let's now power up the circuit and test it. I am plugging it in an outlet and from now on I will need to be very careful not to touch any of the naked wires. To test the circuit functionality I will just need to obscure the photoresistor and verify that the light bulb turns on. And in fact that is exactly what is happening. With the real application in the outdoor, once the sun goes down, the light should turn on automatically, and then it should turn back off at dawn. To simulate that, I will just turn off the light on the bench. And the circuit light goes on as expected. Then, when I turn the light back on, on the bench, the circuit light turns off. And this concludes our experiment. What is left to do now is to just rebuild the circuit in a waterproof case with a waterproof 120 volt socket, since this device is going to be left outside. Then I will install it in the gazebo to control a new set of lights that will replace the existing one. Oh, one more thing. I debated if I needed to provide details in this video of how the diax and triax work. I opted for not doing it, thinking the video would become too long. However, if you are interested in knowing full details on Diax and Triax, please let me know in the comments. I will eventually make a video on that too. See you in my next video, and in the meantime, happy experiments!